have our tagline with Peaceful Streets Project is protect and serve each other. Cops say they protect and serve us. Um, we protect and serve each other. We don't need them. Uh, we want to help each other out. And to be saved from police, I think we have to get rid of the police. Um, that might be a pipe dream. It may not happen in our lifetimes, but we can do as much as we can to, to make them irrelevant and, uh, and get them out of our communities. And to protect and serve each other, we do need community. And so, as Ian said, you know, find yourself around other people who are willing to do the same thing. He obviously is, um, prefers uh, New Hampshire, um, but uh, you know, in Austin, Texas, we have a huge community that's building up around police accountability as well. And there's other places. Um, some people are just locked into their communities. They, they have family that they can't move away from for whatever reason. Um, I would love to see police accountability or a community in Baltimore that can make the Baltimore police stand out. And so it's hard to do with only five people, you know, 10 people, 100 people. The bigger and bigger it gets, the more powerful it becomes. Um, the guys out in Sandusky, Ohio are just killing it. And there's only about five to 10 of them in a town of 30,000, but they have turned that town upside down going after uh, corrupt cops and, uh, you know, community whether it's on a big scale like the Free State Project or a small scale in a certain neighborhood, you know, I think that is what helps protect us against the police when they know that there's going to be consequences for their actions. If I go after someone in this community, I will pay. Why do they go after the homeless so much? Because they know that no one's gonna come after them. So uh, I think that's first and foremost. When it comes to actually dealing with the cops, I think it's really important that you figure out ahead of time where you stand. Are you an activist? Do you want to stand up for the rights of other people? Do you want to make a point? Uh, do you want to expose them? Or do you just want to go home that night to your family and you don't want to lose your job? And that really dictates you know, how much you can do in a given interaction. And if your focus is on getting home that night, then maybe you have to tuck your tail a little bit. And maybe you do act respectful and just get through the situation. Because a $250 ticket is a lot better than your life. You know, so, um, you, people should think in their mind, what am I going to do in various circumstances? What am I going to do if a cop pulls me over and says I was speeding and I wasn't? Okay, what am I going to do if I see a cop you know, planning something on someone? What am I going to do if I see a cop raping someone? What am I going to do if I see a cop killing someone? And like, what are you going to do in each of those situations? And then realize every interaction with a cop is a risk to your life and liberty. There is not a single interaction with any uniformed uh, police officer where your life and liberty is not at risk. Now you can do things to hopefully mitigate those risks, and most people don't get killed by a cop every time they come into contact with them. You only, only get killed once. But um, <laughs> the, the point is, is that no one should ever assume that cops are friendly, cops are gonna respect your rights, you know, that you're gonna get through a situation and you're not gonna be at risk of being hurt or killed. Approaching them as if they're wild animals is a really good way to think about it. Yeah, I mean, this summed up a, a lot of what I could uh, add to it. But yeah, basically, if, if how do I protect myself from cops? You know, there's the obvious of like cameras, like handhelds that you could have. I mean, I look at it like bug out bags or like Antonio was just t touching on, like to be prepared. You know, throw an old <coughs> camera in your glove box or you know, make sure your iPhone or, or smartphone is always charged up. Get yourself familiar with some of the apps. Um, and like Antonio was just touching on, like think of scenarios like. What will I do if I'm pulled over? Like, how far do I want to go? Like, what's my goal, essentially? And like, is my goal to end this intera interaction as soon as possible, or is my goal to highlight, you know, the police statement when, and for what they are, and then, you know, act accordingly and be fine with, like, the outcomes of each of those paths. But uh, being prepared and, and thinking in advance is definitely a, a big thing. Watch some videos, check out some of the resources at all the websites that, that we all work at, and, uh, you know, just little stuff. I know when Pete and I traveled around, we had, like, Camera here, camera there. One, you know, one attached to your backpack. One the easy to pull out. One that can live stream. Uh, you know, that might have been accessible or more fitting for what we were doing. But if you're going to work, you use the same vehicle. One in your glove box. Something quick in your purse or something like that would be, you know, could be the difference between like, you know, two hundred fifty dollar fine or uh, accidental or, intent or intentional shooting, whatever it might be. So the worst case scenario. I like how you guys had the DVDs and the flyers too when you guys were going out doing your outreach shifts in Massachusetts. I think that's really great. Oh yeah, this is one video where like you guys are doing it and someone runs up from behind and is like, I love that video, you guys rock! <laughs> it's like, 
Yeah, so I think, you know, and I guess you guys, you know, we, we rock sometimes. I, I, you know, actually, I, I 